Welcome to Water Science with the Western Virginia Water Authority. Today we're going to talk about the watersheds in which we live and the effect that we have on them every day. I'm sitting in a watershed right now. And now. And now. A watershed is the area of land over which water flows on its way down to a water body. And because water flows downhill, whatever happens on the watershed affects the water. In order to show you how our everyday actions can have an effect on our watershed, we're going to use this watershed model. A model is supposed to resemble the real thing. So we have houses and neighborhoods, mountains, we have some construction, maybe you have construction near your school or near your home. We also have factories, farms, and don't forget, streets, roads, they're all part of a watershed. And remember that it's hard to live in a watershed without having some effect on that watershed. In our own yards, folks may want to keep beautiful landscaping and green lawns. However, some plants do not grow to perfection without some assistance from fertilizer. Many people use store-bought factory-produced fertilizers that are likely high in phosphorus and nitrogen. If these products are applied in too great of quantities, before heavy rains or on steep slopes. That fertilizer is more likely to run off of the watershed and then into streams or nearby storm drains. Storm drains deliver rainwater or stormwater directly into the nearest waterway via an underground pipe. Since fertilizers are designed to help plants grow, once fertilizers enter waterways, they help algae to grow. Too much algae can make it more difficult to treat water for human consumption. Algae also affects recreation and it can cause an imbalance in the waterways, making it difficult for aquatic life to thrive. You can help by utilizing compost instead of store-bought fertilizer. You can also plant native plants that evolved with these conditions so that they are hardier. If you still require fertilizer, read the package instructions and don't apply right before a heavy rainstorm or next to waterways. Farms present another challenge. We have been farming intensively in Virginia for centuries. In fact, one of Virginia's early popular crops was tobacco, which robbed the soil of a vast amount of nutrients. Farms often require some form of fertilization. Many options are possible. Crop rotation to give fields a rest, tilling in winter cover crops that decompose and add nutrients to the soil, and properly aged or composted cow manure are all natural options. Some farmers may use factory produced fertilizers. Once again, if this fertilizer runs off into the waterway, we could see a resulting algae issue. Riparian buffers can help to slow or stop this runoff from the watershed. These riparian buffers along stream banks are strips of hardy plants that are adapted to live in wet conditions. Well adapted, especially native plants, will not require fertilizer to grow and will protect the water. While we are at the farm, let's also consider pesticide usage. Pesticides are used to kill pests, such as insects. Sometimes insects can decimate a farm crop in short order and the farmers who grow food for us may face few solutions and choose to use pesticide. Sometimes pesticides are the only practical method of control. Much like fertilizer, if that pesticide is applied in too great a quantity or just before a heavy rain, it is very likely that the pesticide will run off into the water. Since pesticides are designed to kill, once pesticides enter the water, they can kill off the invertebrates living there that serve as an important base of the food web. Pesticides can also adversely affect other wildlife, including fish, frogs, turtles, water birds, and even birds of prey. Once again, a riparian buffer can slow or stop any runoff containing pesticides. At our homes, we may feel the need to use pesticide as well. For example, you may find mosquitoes to be a nuisance. But again, pesticides can find a way to enter the waterways either by storm drain or from proximity. 
But what if you could eliminate the mosquitoes before they even appear? Mosquitoes lay their eggs in standing water. If that standing water does not contain predators to eat their eggs or larvae, then they will multiply efficiently. Natural wetlands have the predators needed to keep the populations in check, but yards often have other standing water, like wheelbarrows or toys left out in the rain. Saucers that sit under potted plants also hold standing water. All of these places are breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Simply dumping out the water takes away the potential breeding ground for those mosquitoes. Providing some habitat for the birds or bats who will eat any adult mosquitoes will also keep mosquito populations down. Humans aren't the only ones polluting our watershed, and as a result, our water. The animals we keep also contribute. When we walk our dogs, it is often to allow them to use the restroom. That stuff is natural, right? It will just act as fertilizer, right? Wrong. When we leave pet waste behind, it will dissolve and eventually run downhill. That pet waste has harmful bacteria in it that is now in our water supply and recreation areas. So please, don't leave those droppings behind. Carry a bag. Extra bags don't hurt. Pick up after your dog and throw it away in the trash can. Over at the farm, one of the cows is cooling off in the river. You might think that cows would step politely out of the water to use the restroom, but they don't. Again, we have bacteria entering our waterways. Now you may be feeling that we are picking on a couple of animals while wild animals are having a field day pooping in the water. The fact of the matter is that some animals have higher amounts of harmful bacteria in their waste than others. This chart shows the amount of harmful E. coli bacteria in specific animals' waste. Cows have a very large amount of E. coli in their waste, and other animals are then compared to them. So, if you take an animal that poops in the water, a beaver, you can see that it would take 165,000 beavers pooping to add up to the same amount of E. coli that one cow poops. Are beavers the problem? Not unless you have 165,000 beavers all pooping in one spot at the same time. So we need to fence those cows out of and away from the stream. If cows need access to another pasture across the stream, enter the cow crosswalk or a bridge. Sometimes that stream or pond is the cow's water source and farmers need to provide an alternative via wells, troughs, or even solar powered water pumps. These improvements can be expensive, so Virginia farmers can reach out to the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Districts and request financial assistance via their cost share program. Over at the factory, the people in charge are watching their profit margins and would like to make more money by not having to dispose of their waste properly. Usually, industrial waste is either pre-treated and then sent to the municipal wastewater treatment plant or it is disposed of in a different approved location. Most companies follow these regulations because they know this is just the cost of doing business. However, every once in a while, a company tries to sneak pollutants into our waterways. The simple answer here is that companies take responsibility for what happens in their factories. We have our own responsibilities too. We can keep litter from washing over the watershed and entering our waterways. While most people dispose of litter properly, sometimes accidents happen. For example, what if you wheeled out your trash can the night before trash pickup and the wind picked up overnight? Trash would fly everywhere. Rain can also contribute to carrying that trash to the water. Bears and raccoons may also find your trash delicious and make an atrocious mess of it. Be sure to secure your trash containers so they don't become snack bars for wildlife. Also, wait until morning to wheel out those trash cans. Even if we think we are not polluting our water, pollutants wash over the watershed and down into the waterways because water flows downhill. This affects water quality and can lead to higher costs in drinking water treatment, reduced recreational value, and destroyed habitat. In order to prevent this from happening to the water. Remember, we can manage what's happening on the watershed better so that doesn't have to happen. Because what happens on the watershed affects the water.